Hey, I'm Ray Latif. I'm here with John Craven. We're from BevNet. We're at the 2014 Winter Fancy Food Show in San Francisco, California. This one has definitely been one of the biggest and uh, most trafficked uh, fancy food shows that I've ever been to. Uh, it's been bustling from every aisle, inside every booth and every hall. It's been kind of crazy, actually. What's your uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is one of the busier ones in a couple of years. It seems like it's kind of bounced back in terms of foot traffic. Um, you know, the same sort of theme that we've had over the past couple of years, which is, you know, sort of the shift to natural kind of reducing the number of beverage companies here definitely has continued. Um, but, you know, I think, again, it's, you know, this is a great show for people who come and exhibit at it and attend it. And, you know, I think it was another success. So Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we saw about 40 to 50 beverage brands here. A lot of them are sort of going to be at Expo West anyway. And they're prepping launches for that show. Um, but we did see quite a few uh, launch some new products or some new packaging that uh, sort of getting a head start on this new year. Um, some good ones that we saw, Hint, had a really good uh, revamp of their bottles and introduced that new 16.9 ounce PET package for their Hint Fizz product. Um, Going to open up a lot of new channels for them, I think. Um, you talked to Kara Golden a little bit about that. What, what, was, uh, what was the idea behind going into that new package? Yeah, I think for them, you know, they just want to have the product not be perceived as a soda, which when it's in a soda bottle, and it you know kind of is hard to break that and that's where retailers were putting it of course so now they've kind of got that new bottle looks more like a water they've got that unsoda tagline i think it's pretty clear this is not a soda and you know at this point sparkling is a little more developed than when they launched that anyway um sure. so i think that's something that you know it's going to be a pretty big uh game changer for them yeah well hence trying to get out of the soda aisle you're seeing some other soda brands or at least carbonated soft drink brands uh trying to offer consumers a more mainstream consumer base, uh, that better for you, healthier kind of soda. Uh, we saw Q Drinks kind of try to do that. They're launching a new 12 ounce can for all seven of their SKUs, uh, and they're doing a test launch of that uh, product at Target in 50 stores. You talked to uh, Jordan a little bit about that as well. Um, wh what's been the progress of that company, and what do you think of the cans? Well, I think it's been an interesting journey, kind of starting out as you know basically a tonic water and kind of backing their way into being a premium you know soda player essentially. Um, and I think you know going into cans kind of rounds that out nicely. It's not just you know a product that's in glass for a special occasion or on premise. The can is something that is very versatile and you know I think they made it look really good so mm -hmm. I think that's something that again expect that to, to do well. Uh, Califia Farms actually had some really interesting products the new 10.5 ounce line of uh, almond milk waters um, they also have a coffee line and protein line underneath that uh, it, within that 10.5 ounce package. Um, I yeah, know that, that stuff looks great I mean yeah. it's it's really like one of the best tasting dairy alternatives out there and sure. you know I think they've really just have you know developed that product so well and I mean it's hard to I don't know honestly it's kind of like why would you drink soy milk after having that right so yeah and it's gonna open up a lot of new it seems like retail channels for that brand before they were just in that sort of carafe kind of product this will open up a lot more gar grab and go opportunities for uh, that product um, in other news other natural brands that we saw uh, purity organic had a couple new products that were really uh, kind of eye-opening including their chocolate coconut water which uh, uh, we got a quick taste of, which tasted really good, and they're unsweetened black tea, both of which are really, um, you know, sort of on-trend products in terms of those flavored coconut waters and then the zero or no calorie unsweetened tea, um, and I think they did a really good job with both. Yeah, I mean, they're nice incremental add-ons for uh, purity, and I think, you know, the chocolate coconut water in particular, I mean, chocolate coconut water has been tried a couple of times now. But I, I think theirs was really good. I mean, it tasted like coconut water mm -hmm. and chocolate, which is what it should taste like, not, you know, some chocolate drink or whatever. So um, I think that's a nice add-on for them, as is the tea. Um, so excited for that. Yeah, it was interesting. You know, we didn't see a lot of new brands. We saw a couple here and there. Zuma uh, was that new cola, semi-sweet cola. Um, but it doesn't seem like this show is really for new brands as much as, uh, you know, Expo West or Expo East might be. It did seem like this, this show, you know, in the last few iterations has been one where uh, established brands are sort of releasing those new flavors, there's new line extensions, new packaging, like a kombucha wonder drink. Uh, they're extending the distribution for their uh, raw kombucha drinks. Uh, they initially were began in Portland, now they're getting out to the Pacific Northwest. What's the sort of future of the show, do you think, in terms of uh, what's next in, you know, for the iteration in New York and then 
beyond? You know, that's a really hard thing to guess, but I think for beverages, it's something that, you know, we'll continue to see probably in that, you know, 40 to 50 type uh, exhibitors. I think, you know, there's still going to be good retail traffic here. It's not like specialty is dead by any means. It's just kind of changing. So I think it's something that, you know, right now, sort of almost like a bit of a potential turning point for it. Um, so, you know, I don't expect any like major change, um, but you know, it's it's a great show. Love coming here. So yeah, definitely a great show and a great way for some brands to uh, connect with their consumers, their retailers and distributors. Well, before Expo West. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have. But uh, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll be covering Expo West and many other upcoming shows in the coming months. So please stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>